with me in our Bible reading. Let's go to Numbers chapter 14. And uh, one of the things I'll tell you about the book of Numbers is that the reason why it's called Numbers, I believe we talked about it at the end of last session, is because uh, there are two censuses that are taken. There is a census that is taken in chapter 1, and there is a census that is taken in chapter 26. Okay? And the reason why there, there was a reason for a census is because the numbers are going to change. Okay? The first census is taken because of the, the people who came out of Egypt initially. But between the chapter 1 and chapter 26, there's going to be a lot of deaths. As a matter of fact, the whole generation that came out of Egypt is going to die out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And a new generation is going to come up. And it's going to be that new generation that's going to inhabit the promised land. So you have two censuses. Now we're familiar with censuses because uh, the United States just came out of a census uh, this past year. And uh, of course, you know, uh, they count the people in the country because money is allocated based upon the census and political uh, representation is predicated on the numbers of people uh, in the various cities and, and states. Uh, so the census is very important. Well, the census is why we have this book called Numbers. Okay, so everybody knows why it's called the book of Numbers, right? Yes. Now, in Deuteronomy, I mean in Numbers, I'm sorry, chapter 14, I want somebody to uh, start reading, and you need to be a by a mic so that you can be heard. But just start at verse 1 and just know that I might stop you. All right, this is the New King James Version. Okay. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Okay, let's stop right there. The children of Israel were in Egypt for how long? As slaves. 400 years. 400 years. 400 years of heavy taskmasters. But the people are saying what? If only we had died. We should have stayed in Egypt. At least we'd have had a sunrise and sunset and a dash in between. We'd have got us a tombstone. They forgot about how hard it was in Egypt, how difficult it was. They're complaining, and they're complaining to who? But who are they mad at? God. They're mad at God. And the only reason why they don't address God at, at this point is because their arms are too short to box with God. Mm -hmm. In sociology, there's a term called transference. That term means when a person takes their uh, frustrations out on the, the thing that is not the source of their problem. So they are mad at God, but they strike out against the people who are leading them, Moses and Aaron. That happens a lot of times. You know, somebody goes to work and their boss make them mad and they come home and put their fist through the wall. But a wall wasn't their problem. It was the boss, right? Uh, you kick the dog. Well, the dog didn't bite you. you the, the dog is your friend. But you're going to kick the dog because of what happened, you know, someplace else. That's called transference. So what we see here is that they're mad and they're showing their anger against Moses and Aaron, but they're really mad at God. Let's go on. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would, would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, 
Let us select a leader and return to Egypt. We're going to get us a new leader. <laughs> us need us a new leader. That's what they said. Go ahead. They just started drawing. That's the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. All right, stop right there. Now, a lot of people, this is not literally a land flowing with homogenized milk. Okay, that's not what it's saying. It's saying it's a land of plenty, a land of abundance. And so when they went and spied out the promised land, it was exactly what God said it was. It's a land of plenty, a land of abundance. And that's what God had in store for them. Okay, and after being in the desert, It'd be nice to get to a place of abundance. Amen. Right? Yes. And so they had sent out 12 spies. Okay? One spy for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And they went over and they spied the land. Ten of them came back with an unfavorable report. Right. They said, yeah, it's nice. Land is flowing with milk and honey. But we saw giants over there. Mm -hmm. And we were as grasshoppers in their sight. I like to tell people it's bad to, to have a God who can do everything but fail, and yet you got a grasshopper mentality. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and so they, they came back and said, we can't take the land. Joshua and Caleb said, yes, if God be for us, he's greater than the world against us. Basically what they said. All right, let's go on. Only do not rebel against the Lord nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Mm. Mm -hmm. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Mm. Wait a minute. Has anybody ever seen anybody stoned to death? I saw it. No, I, I saw it in real life. I saw, uh, they, they had it on CNN. A young lady who was obviously over in the Middle East had fallen in love with a guy who was of a different tribe that they did not like and they didn't uh, um, have dealings with. And she was absolutely gorgeous. She was just beautiful. They took up stones and they, they threw those, hurled those stones at her and killed her on camera. And I, I never thought I would see anything like that. But they literally, and I'm talking about, this was in the last maybe 20 years, they stoned her to death. One of their own people. So stoning was a way that they killed people back in the Old Testament. Uh, okay, let's go on. And all the congregation, oh, no, nope, they said that already. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Mm. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? Okay, wait a minute. If seeing was believing, mm. these people should believe the Lord. What did they see in the Lord do? The ten plagues. Ten plagues on Egypt? Leading them to the Red Sea. Opening up the Red Sea. <laughs> Manna from heaven. Manna falling from heaven. Have they gotten quail right now? Quail <laughs> from heaven. <laughs> Meat and bread. Provided. provided for them. And they've seen all of this and they're complaining and murmuring against God. You know, so seeing is not believing. We walk by faith, faith. not by sight. sight. And a lot of people say that, but they don't believe it because 
you know, if things don't happen the way they think they ought to happen, some people will go AWOL, absent without official leave, right? Uh, but God is good all the time. Yeah. Yes, and all the time, God is good. You know, God don't stop being good just because our circumstances go south. You know, God is, he, he's always good. And here's the other thing. Uh, we're not here to stay. Okay? Don't ever forget this. Your body, your physical body is temporal. But your spirit is eternal. And so the Bible says, if this earthly house or this tabernacle shall dissolve, we have another building, not made with hands eternal in the heavens. In other words, we got another place. Praise God. And we didn't come here, this is not our home. We're just traveling through. And so a lot of people have got this thing twisted. They think that, that, that you know, they're supposed to just stay here forever. That's not going to happen. But God got better for us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. I could stay on that for a little while. But, right, right. Uh, you know, we, we, we need to trust God and, uh, and, and just rely on him. So God says, what, how long am I going to put up with these folk who are, are, are murmuring against me? Go on. I will strike them with the pestilence and dis disinherit them. And I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. Okay, now listen. God don't play. God is not the one you want to get angry with. Here's the thing. A lot of people try to make you believe that the God of the Old Testament is different than the God of the New Testament. But the Lord said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I change not. So the same God that you uh, worship, that is uh, a saving God, is also a God that is wrathful. He gets angry. And, and if God gets angry, Bad things happen. This plague that we've gone through, that, 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 that plague is reminiscent of some things that are coming in Revelation. And look at how many millions of people were snuffed out because of that plague. So the Lord came down and said, how long am I gonna put up with them? Go ahead. And Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear it, for by your might you brought these people up from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among these people, that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands above them, and you go before them in the pillar of a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nations uh, which have heard of your fame will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people to the land, which he swore to give them, therefore he killed them in the wilderness. And now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy forgiving iniquity and transgressions. But he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. All right, let's stop right there. What is Moses doing? I'm trying to save him. He is interceding. He is interceding on behalf of the people that wanted to stone him. We just read up a few verses that they wanted to kill him. Do you know it takes a lot of God in you to pray for folk who are trying to pray on you? 
Now I just use two different words. <laughs> it's hard to P-R-A-Y for folk who are trying to P-R-E-Y on you. But Moses was God's man and Moses intercedes. In other words, he, he goes to God on their behalf and says, God, you can kill them. But if you do, what are the other nations going to say? The nations that heard about how you opened up the Red Sea and the nations that heard about how you fed them and led them and all that, they will say that you weren't able to deliver on your promise because you promised that you were going to take them to a land flowing with milk and honey and if they don't make it, then that's going to be an indictment on your leadership. It's basically what Moses told God. Now Moses is not telling God what uh, anything that God is not going to uh, that had already considered. Okay, and here's the thing: the Lord changes not. So whenever you see the Lord act, it is because it was in the Lord's arsenal of possibilities. Oh my goodness! In other words, God does what God wants. Amen. Uh, and so we need to keep that in mind. Don't ever think that God changes his mind. No, God, he had in his mind what he intended to do before they left Egypt. And they were going to get to the promised land because that's where God told them that they would go. Now, just because he promised the nation that they would go didn't mean that all the individuals mm. would go. Also keep that in mind that we are responsible for our actions and every decision you make has consequences. We need to choose right. Amen. Amen. And we need to make sure that we are in step with what God is doing. And so, verse 20. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. Mm -mm, you wait a minute. Mm. The Lord said, I pardoned him according to what? Your word. Your word. Do you know that your prayers have power? Mm. <laughs> your prayers have power. Amen. You can pray and ask God for things and God will deliver. Why? Because you're the apple of God's eye. God has made you a kingdom of priests. You are a, a royal priesthood. You're a chosen generation. You are peculiar people. And that, that's the reason why it's good to pray. Amen. And when you dial up heaven, don't hang up. You just have a running dialogue with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and don't, you know, cut God off because God wants to say something back to you even when you Amen. talk to him. Amen. All right, let's go on a little further. Uh, I pardon doing it. But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of these pe these of those who rejected me see it. Yo, oh, wait a minute. Did y'all hear what the Lord said? The Lord said, since y'all been rebelling against me, after all I've shown you, all I've done for you, you are not going to see the promised land. It is bad to die in the wilderness with the promised land in your view. Mm. those people had gotten so rebellious and mean that God said you're not going to make it to the land now again remember there are two censuses in this book so some of these folks are going to die in the wilderness right? the whole generation is going to die in the wilderness you know it's bad for you to have to die out for somebody to see the Lord <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get this idea in Isaiah chapter 6 
Remember Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord, and he was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Um, Uncle Uz had to get out of his way in order for him to see the Lord. I don't want to have to die for somebody to see the Lord. Mm. And I want my life to be an example so that people can follow me Amen. as I follow Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, but these people had gotten on God's last nerve to the extent God said, you're not going to make it. Now the nation's going to make it, you're not. This is what he says. Um, okay, continue on. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, and has followed me fully, I will bring him into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Now the Amalekites, Amalekites and the Canaanites, Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow turn and move out into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. God is going to deliver Israel, and God will steer you around trouble. Because they were not a fighting people yet. God will shield you. And God will direct you in the way that he wants you to go. Notice that um, Caleb, Joshua and Caleb were the two spies that came back with a favorable report. Guess what? They're the only two people that were age 20 and over that made it to the promises. Hmm. Think about that. Out of that whole entourage of people that left Egypt, only Joshua and Caleb that were age 20 and older made it to the ground. Everybody else is a new generation. And sometimes old heads got to die out in order for progress to be made. Isn't that bad? But it's true. Um, it should be that, that the older heads ought to be instruction and, and guidance for the, the younger generation. Yeah. Yeah. And then thank God for grandparents. Mm -hmm. You know, grandparents that are praying grandparents that, that, that show the way, that, you know, uh, through their wisdom, uh, help us, you know, uh, to walk uh, through this life without having to go through what they had to go through. Because they share with us wisdom and knowledge. That's how it ought to be. Okay, let's go on. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness, all of you who were num numbered, according to your entire number, from twenty years old and above, except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. But your little ones, whom you said would be vic victims, I will bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness forty years, and bear the brunt of your infidelity, until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness. According to the number of days in which you spied out the land, forty days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely forty years, and you shall know my rejection. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do so to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Look at, you know, uh... In the Amplified Version, it says, In this wilderness they shall be consumed by war, disease, and plagues, and here they shall die. 
Who's talking? God. This is God talking. God say, you're not going to make it, and I'm going to tell you how you're not going to make it. Plagues, disease, war. They had a lot of funerals in the desert. Listen, we need to have a healthy understanding of who God is. He's not to be played with. And just because some folk don't believe him, don't you be one of them. You better trust in the Lord and, and follow him because the Lord knows what's best for all of us all the time. And sometimes the way the Lord leads us may not seem right, but God knows what's best. And God many times won't take you from point A to point B. Sometimes you need to go to point D to in order to get to point B. You need to learn some things before you get to where you're going. So that when you get there, you'll appreciate how you got there. You ever seen somebody get uh, big and mess up, just, just lose everything? They weren't ready for success. Right? Yeah. So God wants us to be ready for the blessing that he has in store for us. So that we will successfully... Uh, give him praise and bless his name because his name is worthy to be praised. Amen. Verse 36. Now the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land, those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. They did what? They died by the plague before the Lord. The Lord allowed a plague to come. They all died. Ten of them. All ten of them that went and come back with an unfavorable report. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh remained alive of the men who went to spy out the land. Listen, the majority is not always right. <laughs> ten spies said we can't do it. They died. Two of them came back and said, we, we, if the Lord be for us, he's greater than the world against us. And guess what? They made it to the promised land. Yeah. All right. Then, Verse 39. Then Moses told these words to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose early in the morning and went up to the top of the mountain, saying, Here we are. And we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. Mm, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. They going where? Here we are. We where they say they going? We will go up to the place which the Lord has promised. In other words, see, see, here, see, you got to be able to read between the lines. What they said was, we going up there and we going to take the land that God said we can have. Oh, yeah, we're going to get it. Now, God just told them they ain't going. <laughs> you are not going. You're not going to make it. They said, let's get it. <laughs> How do you think that's going to work out? You know, when your plans differ from God's plan, God's plans are the ones that are going to prevail, not yours. And we need to understand that sometimes our will is not God's will. Listen, if Jesus had to alter his will, what about you and me? Mm, that's good. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he said, Lord, if it be possible, remove this cup from me. And then he said, nevertheless, not my, my will, but thy will be done. If he had to pray that, what about you and me? Amen. You know, sometimes we pray things and, and we, we want what we want. But we need to understand that God's will will prevail. Hallelujah. Mm. All right, let's go on. I said, here we are, and we will go up to the place which the Lord promised for. Yeah, we have take it. Okay. And Moses said, now why do you transgress the command of the Lord 
for this will not succeed. Y'all can go up there if you think you're bad. <laughs> Don't. Do not go up, lest you be defeated by your enemies, for the Lord is not among you. Come on around here, Cletus. <laughs> You'll limp back. <laughs> for the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you have turned away from the Lord. The Lord will not be with you. Mm. But they presumed to go up to the mountaintop. Oh, Lord. Nevertheless, neither the ark of the covenant of the Lord no, nor Moses departed from the camp. Then the Am Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in that land came down and attacked them and drove them back as far as Hormah. They lost a miserable fight. Now, anytime you try to fight without the Lord, that's a losing battle. Praise God. You can't just do any kind of way and expect that the Lord is going to be with you. God has his way. And we need to be in the Lord's way. I always tell people, if you want to be, if you want to know God's will, you got to know God's ways. If you want to know God's ways, you need to be in God's word. Because God's word reveals God's ways and his ways reveal his will. We need to know his word, be in his ways, follow his will. And Amen. God will deliver on time. Amen. Praise God. But these Israelites, they tried to do it their way and they lost miserably. There's a way that seems right mm. to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 3, 4 and 5 says, Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I have a question. Yes. Okay. Uh, Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Oh, that is the New, New, King, New James King James Version. Okay, I mean the old King James Version. And in verse 34, where it says about the 40 years, the 40 days, mm -hmm. and then at the last night it says, And ye shall know my breach of promise, about what he had promised to Abraham. I guess that's what they did, the breach of promise. That's why I can't understand why would they think that they could still go for. Because <laughs> you know, people think they they better than God. You know, you know, I think people think that God is like their their friend, or like their buddy. Or, you know, I think you know. the God of the world is so strong. That's what they don't understand. Yeah. The strength of Satan yeah. is so strong. He has blinded so many yeah. eyes of our leaders yeah. that we don't see. I mean, unless the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. gives you wisdom and discernment or understanding. Yeah. You have to pray for that. You have to really, really pray for that. You know, because uh, this man is powerful. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I read Romans chapter 1 uh, yes, no, over and over and over again. And, um, you know, when you look in the heavens and you see the sun shining, the S U N. You ought to know that we serve a powerful God. Listen, no person could have put that sun up there. God has so strategically placed the earth that if we were any degrees closer to the sun, we would burn up. And if we were any further away from the sun, we'd freeze to death. Mm. But God has the earth strategically placed so that we can get warm on warm days and, and on cold days we don't freeze to death. That's the awesomeness of our God. God has so strategically and, and uh, intricately made you and me that we breathe out what plants and trees need. And the plants and the trees help us breathe in what we need. Oxygen. Because the universe is so large, it's just, our brain is so small. We, uh -huh. can't, we can't even begin to imagine. Can't even imagine. The massiveness of this universe. That's what he did to you. 
It's a miracle just breathing. Breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide. If, you, if that carbon dioxide stayed in your body, you'd die. But God has so strategically made your body that you inhale and exhale every second and you don't even think about it. We need to praise God for the breath that we breathe. We live, move, and have our being in him. People need to have a healthy uh, view of God. And God is not the one to be playing with. Praise God. I tell people, if you don't believe in what you're praying, stop praying. Right. Don't waste your breath. But if you pray, believe what you say. Claim it. Because guess what? God is a prayer hearing and prayer answering God. Go ahead, Jennifer. You know, when I look at the Israelites and, and how hard-headed hard, it, hard they were, I think about um, the term that comes straight to my mind is pride. Mm. Um, you know, because especially when you think about and talk about Satan, how, you know, he's the father of, of you know, pride, right? And those, that was his downfall. And we as humans here today, I mean, when we get so prideful and so full of ourselves that think that we're, you know, we're all that and... You know, we can do it because, cause, you know, whatever our justification, you know, it's pride. Yeah. It will be our downfall. Yeah. Absolutely. God uh, has made us the apple of his eye. We're the crown jewel of God's creation. And God intends for us to succeed. Um, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It didn't say all things were good. It said all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And the Bible agrees, you know, in its parts. You know, I, I read that in, in Romans 8, 28, but then I go to Psalm 1, it says, Blessed the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. Yeah. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth is going to prosper. Yeah. God wants you to prosper. Repeat this after me. God, God wants me, wants me to, prosper. to prosper. And prosperity has, it has nothing to do with how much money you got in the bank. Amen. Amen. Prosperity has everything to do with walking in wisdom, having peace, uh, having contentment, the fruit of the Spirit operating in your life, uh, walking in the gifts of the Spirit, that God manifests in the lives of believers, God is going to take control of your life when you give your life to him. Amen. He becomes the, the new owner. Yeah, you're under new construction. New management. Praise God. Because, you know, in our past life, you know, we were under uh, Satan's management. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You need to read John chapter 3, where Jesus talks about those who are born of the Spirit. You know what he said? They're like the wind. You feel it, but you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. He says that's how people who are led by the Spirit are. Praise God. We just need to follow the Spirit's leading. And God will direct us and he will uh, take us to the promised land. Um, there's a song we used to sing here. It says, he did not bring us out to take us back again, but he brought us out to take us into the promised land. And I don't know about you, but I'm headed for the promised land. I want, I want to make it. To the promised land. I want to hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rule over many. 
enter into the master's joy. Well, praise God. That's uh, where we are this week. Um, anybody have any closing thoughts or prayer requests as we bring closure to uh, our study on tonight? Yeah. I just want to, uh, I don't know Go why ahead. it just keeps coming up. It's just that uh, when you preached about Sunday, how Jesus emptied himself. And that's just, you know, Jesus. We think about who he was, mm -hmm. who he is, and how he came, and he just, he didn't come being boastful, this is who I am, move back out of the way, but how he emptied himself to be a servant, mm -hmm. and I don't know why, but that's just been sticking with me. Yeah, so. yeah, I know why it's sticking with you, because you're a servant. <laughs> <laughs> you got a servant heart. That's the reason it's sticking with you. <laughs> yeah, servants yeah. can spot servants, right? Yeah. Uh, but the Lord, you know, I love that about the Lord that he emptied himself because he wanted to live life like we got to live. And he wanted to live it successfully to let us know that we can be successful in living this life and running this race. It's not going to be easy. But, you know, he didn't promise that it was going to be easy. But he did promise never to leave us nor forsake us. That he would be with us every step the way. And that's the solace that we have. That's the assurance that we have. That we're never alone. Right? Uh, David said he was an early subscriber to that. In the 23rd Psalm, he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. Oh my goodness. So anyway, and we thank God for all of our young people here today. God bless you all. Um, um, you know, sometimes you look at them, you don't know what they're getting, but God gives them what they need on their level. Praise God. And so we thank God for that. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, thank you for tonight. We thank you for uh, the study of the Holy Spirit. We also thank you, God, that we, we see where when people murmur, and complain, God, that you are not uh, pleased with that, that you want us to follow you because you're awesome in all of your ways. So God, help us to have a servant's heart and help us to be able to, to lead where you follow or follow where you lead. By your Holy Spirit, God, uh, fill us and, and equip us to handle the things that we have to encounter in this life. We pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. God, you know what they stand in need of. Bless them, God, that they might be a blessing to everyone that they come in contact. And God, for that and so much more, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us on the internet. We'll see you next week, Lord willing. God bless you.